thank Duke and the Singers doing a great job. As always. That's super encouraging. I think Sean and Gamble would share. That was uh, that was awesome. So thank you, brother. You guys doing okay? Is it hard enough for you? You sure now? You probably guys like. Oh, I'm going to say a word of prayer and we'll continue on with the service. Amen. Heavenly Father, God, thank you again for allowing us to be here to worship you. Uh, we pray that you uh, help us to worship even more deeply. Help us to open wide our hearts to you to allow your word to touch our hearts and to move us to God. That you remove every barrier between us and the miracle that you're trying to achieve, that you're wanting to achieve this morning. I pray that the words are your words, not my words, Heavenly Father, that your spirit speaks uh, through me as a vessel to God. You allow us to, to be different when we leave than when we enter. We pray all this in your name and through the Son of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. This is me. If you're new here, I'm Frank Davis. That, that's what I do. Um, that's what it's about, and we're going to talk about the Word of God today a little bit. Um, before we get started, we're going to have a video that we watched to get us in the right frame of mind. Characters, but you know what? 
That's true for us too. So the name of the sermon today is flashed up on the screen is in a moment. Because I really believe that God does much of his greatest work. Not over a long period of time, right? Although he does that, but a lot of what God does is in a moment. And I want to talk about three things that will happen in your life and can happen any day and even today that happen in a moment. In a moment, we can experience devastation. We, we can experience, and most of us at some point in our lives, sometimes at multiple points in our lives, we will experience devastation in a moment. In a moment, we can experience transformation, and in a moment, we can experience revelation. So I'm Ron, okay, I'm, I'm MC Frank. You got devastation, transformation, and revelation. They'll all happen in a moment. We'll talk first about devastation, and how that can happen in a moment in our lives. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Um, we've got slides for it, so don't be turning there. But 1 Corinthians 10, verse 11, I'll start with, so these things happen to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the culmination of the ages has come. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. And so, what happens before this passage is Paul's recounting to the Corinthians some of the great works God did, but also some of the great punishments he did to, to people who didn't obey and weren't faithful. And he says those things happen. All those stories you read in the Old Testament, those events, is not just history for us, guys. These are examples, good and bad, Come on. that we're supposed to learn from. Look, if your Bible study, first off, hopefully you're studying the Bible today, right? We got to be walking with God. Okay, let's say it. Hopefully you're reading, you're studying your Bible. Not just every day, not just the blank looks, okay? Hopefully it's happening, right? And if, if you're not, and if you're just getting started, just getting back into it, I always recommend starting with the Gospels and then branching out from the Gospels to the New Testament. Just because the whole Bible is the story of Jesus. And the more you understand from starting with the Gospels on, the better you'll understand the Old Testament. Right. Okay, and you go back and read that too. But make no mistake, we've got to be reading the Old Testament too. Right. Because there's lessons in there in the Old Testament. Also, there's, there's things about the character of God that play out that is easier to understand through the Old Testament. Okay? He says, and he says that these things are there for a reason. God laid them out there for a reason. We need those things as examples to inspire us and also to warn us and prepare us for following him and for life in general. Amen. And, so, and so if you think that you're standing for our spiritually or just standing for my life, remember their example. And be careful that you don't fall because what? The hard times are coming. So don't get so secure in your situation and in your planning and in whatever that you're not ready or you don't expect hard times or you treat hard times when they come as something unnatural. It's like, how could this happen to me? I'm such a good person. I planned so well. How could this ever happen to me? He said, look, guys. Did you read the examples? Everyone, every one of them, whether they were wicked or evil, whether they were living right or living wrong, they all experienced hard times. And not just hard times, devastated times. Whether it was Abraham or Joseph or Jeremiah or Isaiah or Elijah or Elisha, they, I mean, have, have you read the examples? In fact, sometimes the guys who are living spiritually went through harder times than the ones who were wicked. Now, have you read the times? And oftentimes, the devastation came on them in a moment. In a moment, Joseph went from being the favorite child of 12 of his father to being thrown in a pit, having his brothers debate on whether or not to kill him. 
That was the debate. Okay, that was the talk show radio debate outside the pit. Pros and cons, to kill or not to kill Joseph. That was Fox News, right? And then they and then they be sold into slavery as a compromise. Devastation came on him in a moment. Come on. In a moment, Moses went from being a raised like a child in Egypt to being a prince of Egypt with, with authority and power to being a, 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 a runaway, a fugitive running for his life, living in exile in Midian. Come on. Come on. And in a moment, he went from being in exile for 40 years to being God's man, talking to a burning bush, called to lead the people out of Egypt. Devastation came on Moses in a moment. But so did transformation. Hard times come. Man, you think things are going well, man, you got things planned out, you lose your job. And in a moment, everything changes. Man, you, you, think, you think marriage is going well. All of a sudden, you found your husband's cheating. You, you, think, you think things are going well through pregnancy, or all of a sudden, the, sudden the, the baby's in trouble. Right? Just, just had, a, cousin, just had a, a niece give birth to a stillborn child. And, and they found out in the, in the ninth month, weeks before delivery, that the child was stillborn. And, the, and she had to go through the labor and deliver the child as if the child was alive. And so and they, they, they're painting the, 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 the room, they got the crib, they everything. everything. Everything shipped out, and then in a moment, the devastation comes in a moment. I've I lived this. Too often, right? And I'm not the only one in the room that's lived this. Not like I got stories and you don't. Not like my stories are more devastating than your stories, right? Look, you know what minor surgery is? Surgery to somebody else. Right? Because when it's you, it's, it's major. Look, a brill, you know, you know a brill, the, 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 a brill got more energy and more smiles than to be humanly possible. <laughs> so in the grill, at uh, uh, a moment when the grill's bouncing around living life, and then what happens? Man, her, her, her appendix is about to bunch. And she has to have emergency surgery. And she, she can tell you the stories of her near-death experience. And devastation comes in a moment. In a moment. And God says, look, don't, don't be surprised. And don't be so confident in your situation that you are shocked or you feel immune to devastation. Come on. Come on, Brian. It'll, it'll fall on you like a thief in the night. For everybody. Next slide. Because all I want to say, though, notification has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure. He says, look, no temptation is, is hitting you for what's common to man. It's not that anybody has the same situation. And I know a lot of times we feel like no one can understand the, the, the exact circumstances that we're going through. Because every, every story is a little bit different, right? But he says at the end of the day, the emotions you're going through, the pain that you're going through, the fact that you're going through that pain, that's common. And you're not the first one to have your heart broken. You're not the first one to, to be in, in a pit. You're not the first one to be in debt. You're not the first one to have someone mistreat you. You're not the first one to have someone you love die unexpectedly. You're not the first one to be ill. You're not the first and, and it's not to minimize what you're going through or to minimize your unique emotions, right? But to, to help you understand that you're in a great fraternity, a great sorority of hurting people. Come on, Come on. That you're in a great sorority of damaged goods, right? That, that you're in a great fraternity of, of bleeding, of people who are bleeding and <laughs> wounded. Because right. we're all on the battlefield together and we've all been wounded together. Don't feel like you're the only one out there in 
the struggle, in the pit, in the thick of it, bleeding. Or don't be in our arrogance, feeling like you got to put up some facade up because you're the one that has it together and you're not bleeding. Wow, to Joe so great. He he's always has the good. He's always, he's a liar. That's what he is. <laughs> That's all that means. Oh, the marriage is always great. And then I've never seen him fight. That's, yeah, okay. You got to be scared of them. Right? Because they don't exist. They, they don't exist. It's like when you go to the supermarket and you see like an apple that is so red and so big. I'm like, you ever see the apples like the like huge apples? Like, you know, the apples like are like grapefruit sized apples, you know, just sitting there and they're, and they're super red. Like red, like a painting red. And they're shiny. You know what that means? It's not real. <laughs> they done pumped that thing with so much stuff. They dyed the skin, this is true. And they whack, and they put wax on the outside of the apple to make it shine. You know, apples don't grow on the tree like that. You won't find a perfect apple on a tree. They don't look beautiful on a tree, right? They taste good, but they don't look beautiful. Okay, so you, you find someone unblemished and unmarked and unthis and I'm thinking this guy is too good to be true. It is! Because struggle is common to mankind. And devastation comes in and out and in and out of everyone's lives. Sometimes through no fault of our own, sometimes through all the fault of our own, a lot of times through a combination of the two. But it comes. And he says, understand this though, everything that happens in your life, this is God, understand this. This is God talking real talk. I allow it to happen. Doesn't mean I make everything happen. I, I know that you were molested as a child. God didn't want that to happen, but he allowed it to happen. You might be braiding around that, right? You got your heart broken. God, God, God said, I'm saying they didn't want that to happen, he, he allowed. There's nothing that happens in this universe that God doesn't either cause to happen or allow it to happen. I didn't write it. I don't even like it. Come on. That's right. That's real. But it's true. And we can wrestle. We'll talk about why God does that, why God allows it to happen. A lot of it comes down to free will. If we don't allow the world to have free will, then we have to we have to experience the consequences of our actions and the consequences of our collective sin. Does that make sense? And it's kind of like when we are we're like teenagers. Kids, they want to be independent and be treated with the respect of adults, right? Until something bad happens, like why? I want you to pay it, take care of it, make it go away. Then the children. <laughs> you go out to eat, they want you to pay for the meal. Whether they're working or not. I'm like, are you an adult or are you not an adult? They drive your car, want you to put gas in it. Are you an adult or are you a child? We want to live on this earth and we want to be, we want to make our decisions and our free will. And then it's like, well, God, why are you let bad things happen? Because I let you, I let you choose to be good or bad. If you're going to be good or bad, that means evil is going to happen. And you're going to experience pain from your own evil and the evil of other people. And as much as it pays me, I have to, I have to allow, I, I'm going to treat you like an adult, whether you like it or not. And collectively, we, we feel the pain of our sin and the sin around us. And God allows bad things to happen. Does that make sense? Yes. But what he says in this passage is interesting. He says, some things though, even though free will plays out, 
Some things are so overwhelming, I stop them. And the shocking thing here isn't that God lets things do. It's that even though the world's free, sometimes he interferes with free. He says, he says that, that I sometimes step in the way. It, trust me, everything that happened to you that could happen to you. This is a wicked world, and I, I let it play itself out up to a point. But trust me, I haven't let everything happen to you that could have happened to you. And I, ain't, I step in there, and that storm that took your house could have taken more. Come on, Frank. And I, I always, I always buffer it. Whether you deserve it or not. Come on. Whether you're thinking about me or not. Come on. I always buffer it to the point that there's a way out for you. Amen. There's a way to me for you. Amen. So, so yeah, I let free will play out. But trust me, someone has been there the whole time. Come on. To filter. Because if I let the evil of this world hit you unfiltered, you couldn't stand. Amen. Forget about the world. If I let the evil from your own life hit you unfiltered. Come on. Come on. If I made you suffer through all your dumb mistakes to the full extent you should have suffered, Come on. you couldn't have stood. Come on. Don't get it twisted. I've been a buffer. And because I'm, I've been a filter, there's always a way out. There's never a, uh, I had no choice but to. Come on. My situation is so bad, this is the only thing I can do. God, God says, no, I am, I've been a buffer to make sure there's always a way out. Come on, amen. For you to do the right thing. Amen. Come on, Frank. Even in a bad situation. Come on. Devastation comes in a moment. But the good news is transformation comes in a moment as well. Amen. Transformation. Amen. Next slide. There you go. Let's read Romans 4, 16 to 17. That's also on the slides. It says, therefore the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace. And may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring. Not only to those uh, of you who are about the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our Father in the sight of God, in whom he believed. The God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. He goes on to say, in the rest of that passage, against all hope, Abraham and hope believe. And so became the Father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Come on. This passage is rich and it's full, and I'm not going to teach the whole thing today. I'm going to teach some of it next week, okay? Amen. It's a great testament, testament, testament of, of Abraham's faith that he believed God could and would do the impossible in his life. That a man who, who was over 100 years old, his wife he was barren when she was young, and now he was old and barren. That they can have a baby according to God's promises. That, that's a, a great testimony of faith. I want to talk about for a second where that faith came from. It, it, it tells you, know, God gives him glory, props for having that faith, and says, that's why he's the father of faith. But he goes on and says, at the end of verse 17, he says that God gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. That God has the power to speak things into existence. And that's a good term, so we can speak things into existence, right? You know you can. Can I help you out with that? That sounds great. You know, I, I, all the talk show hosts are saying that you give, we, we're giving uh, ourselves power that belongs on the And when it does happen, this is God being gracious. Then we say, I spoke into existence. I beat cancer. Who can beat cancer? You can't be at me. <laughs> you better give a praise. You know what? You don't speak things to existence. You you have faith, and he, what? He rewards. He speaks things to existence. He's the only one that can. And Abraham understood 
We serve a God that does amazing, incredible things. He speaks things to existence. Amen. He, you ever had your life transformed for the better? In a moment. You know, we've gone through hard times, so sometimes I'm not sure my kids I think life changes in the morning. And just like this challenge came out of nowhere, blessings come from nowhere too. Amen. Sometimes we get so worried about what the future will hold and, and we, we're doing grass. If things keep going the way they're going, I, how my life gonna be different? If I do this, I, and, and the truth is, just be faithful, do what you're supposed to do. And have faith that God, just God can turn this around. That you don't have to see the blessing for it to come. Yeah. And blessings don't come incrementally necessarily. A lot of times, the blessing comes at once, like the pain comes at once. And all of a sudden, God sends the blessing. God sends the miracle. God sends the transformation for your situation. We've got to be faithful and understand that our God speaks things to Existence. And because he can, we the faith can do that through him. Not our own So no matter how dark the situation, how 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 bad is the, the, the argument or the marriage or the hurt or the pain, God can transform it. It turns fast, right? We're in the middle of one of those situations right now. Uh, praying took a long time, and then all of a sudden, it turns, it, when, it, when, it, when, it, when the blessing comes, it comes all, it comes all at once. Have faith. Have faith in a God that can give you transformation of your situation. Amen. Amen. That makes sense to you? Yeah. You know, I was uh, telling the story of time, being, being, coming back from Africa, being very, very sick, uh, going to all the different specialists, and they, and they couldn't diagnose what was going on. And, uh, no one could, could not diagnose it. We couldn't get relief for the symptoms. Like, like, for the first year, I just got sicker and sicker, and there wasn't even a way. They couldn't figure out medication to even alleviate the symptoms. And so I ended up going to a, what I call a witch doctor. It was a... He was an immunologist, right, MD, who basically stopped practicing immunology and started practicing alternative medicine. And the guy, Nick Gonzalez, became one of the top alternative medicine guys in the country, just, just died a couple of years ago. But, but, but Nick was a guru, he was, he was the doctor of the Richard Famous, he cost a zillion dollars to go see, and because he was a friend of a friend, I got to see him on the, on the buddy bags, right? He had a waiting list for years, for people definitely ill, and I got to jump them up. So that was God. And so I saw the great witch doctor, Nick Gonzalez. And Nick sent me to an older witch doctor in Atlanta named Dr. Roy Sweat. <laughs> now understand, my dad, my dad uh, was a medical doctor. I didn't grow up believing in alternative medicine. I wasn't one of people that believed in that stuff. My mom kind of did. She did, actually. And I didn't believe my mom's homemade remedies or the country things they did. And that you rub mud on stuff and it gets better. I, I didn't believe all this. <laughs> and we had a lot of West Indians on ministry at the time, and they, they all had a bunch of, and also a lot of Latinos. They all had remedies from the country, and they had, you know, you drink, you drink, uh, you know, aloe, aloe stuff that you'll get better. You rub this on your head, and, uh, whatever. And they, okay. And I'm like, whatever. Don't believe in it. So all of a sudden, I go to a witch doctor in, in, in uh, East Side of Manhattan who sent me to a witch doctor in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm sick, man. I'm flying to Atlanta, man. I'm, I'm, I'm miserable. And I, 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 I gotta sleep all day just to do it, just have the strength to complain. I, I go down there and I see Dr. Roy Sweat. He's, he's old and country. Roy is still working, by the way. Five days a week. And he's in his 90s. I, I met Roy old. I, I met him, he was in the 70s. He's still working now in his, in his, in his, in his 90s. But, so I go, this old man comes, and he's like, hey, hey, Frankie, go get your bed. And I'm like, I'm doing what? Hey, he's a chiropractor. I don't believe in chiropractors. 
But he's not even like a normal chiropractor. He has like a little machine that he uses that hits, that, that hits you through your neck and aligns your whole spine by tapping your neck. Right. He invented you know, 30 odd years earlier. Right. Okay. I was traveling for a year, and old man witch doctor has a machine that he invented that taps your neck. <coughs> okay. So I get on the table and puts me <coughs> my neck under the machine, and I hear the can hit the button, and I don't really feel much of anything, but it kind of taps my neck, and I'm like, okay, this. <coughs> is good. So when is it going to start? We're done. <laughs> I'm like, let me get out of this crazy old man's office and resume my illness in peace. And he says, sit up. And I spring up. I'm like, did that just happen? And I'm thinking, I'm trying to crash. Maybe that's a better one, right? I'm ready to get out of here. And he checks my neck, and you know, like, OK, now stand up. And I got up like I'd never been sick. And it, honestly, if my wife had not been in the room, I would have thought I was imagining the whole thing. <coughs> now, this, this is not commercial with Dr. Roy Sweat, although God used him in a great right way. And helped me to, 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 to maintain some semblance of health through the next 20 years. Uh, by, by, by working with him and then later on acupuncture and things that happened. The point is that God can't use anything. God can use the foolish things to shame the wise. And that God can change your circumstance in a moment. I was in the middle of trying to file for disability. Within a month, I was back in the ministry working full time with the ministry. That God would bless to multiply and do amazing things. God has a sense of humor. And God can transform your circumstance in a moment, in ways that, just like you don't see the devastation coming, you won't see the blessing coming. Amen. Other than through faith. Amen. Does that make sense to you? Yes, sir. And last in the Revelation, and we'll, we'll read that and we'll go. Devastation, transformation, revelation, the rotten sun. <laughs> Acts 3 19, repent then and turn to God so that the sins may be wiped out and that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. He said that when we repent, we turn to God and we get times of refreshing and that refreshing happens at once. Repentance happens at once. Repentance isn't is not, is not necessarily a process. A lot of times that, that we confuse repentance with the fruit of repentance, right? If, if, if you repent of, of lying and you go back and tell people the truth, well, telling people the truth is the fruit of that repentance. Repentance is a decision that you Right. The term of God that happens in a moment. The fruit we see for years. Right? But the decision, it's not like, well, I have to repent it until I see the fruit. Don't get it twisted. It's not like you can't get baptized until you prove that the fruit's there. Okay? It's a decision that you make to repent. And the fruit is seen by your actions. And there's no fruit of repentance, guess what? You didn't really repent. But that plays itself out over time. The decisions made in one sense. And, and when you really make that heartfelt decision, the refreshing comes, what? In a moment. Yes. See, repentance is a decision that we can all make today. Amen. Amen. If you're in a situation where you're, where you're doing wrong, you know you're doing wrong. You're not pleasing God, you know you're not pleasing God. You're not, you, 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 know you, need to, you know you need to apologize. You know you need to, 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 to uh, put, put blockers on your computer. You know you need to get out of a, a simple living situation. You know you need to, to quit that drug, stop going to the club, to stop taking phone calls from that guy. Right? You can make a decision in the service to repent. And have it refreshing come. Now the actions, the packing up the box, throwing off the weed, putting on the blocker, that may, that will happen what, tonight, tomorrow, and 
repercussions going forward, right? But you can make a real decision and be free. Right? Amen. 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 That revelation word clicks and you decide for real. Not emotional when you feel bad, but you ain't really going to change nothing. I'm talking about when you decide for real. Don't, don't get it twisted. Not them tears, the crocodile tears you get to avoid a beating. I, I put my mama, I'm sorry, mama. I won't do it, don't beat me, mama. I, I, I will not lay it out. Knowing full well, if I, if I don't get caught, I'm going to do it again. <laughs> now, when, you, when that revelation happens and you decide to really repent, why deny yourself the refreshing that could be yours? Today. Yeah. A lot of us are in a lukewarm, stuck place because we're not doing right disciples. We're not sharing our faith. We're not, we're not putting God first. We're kind of dragging the church. You can decide to be different today, right now. Amen. Why deny yourself Amen. the blessing of today? Amen. Last in Daniel, I'll tell you how that works. When the revelation comes today, the victory comes today. What do, what do I mean by that? In Daniel 10, it says, uh, 10, 12, then he continued, do not be afraid. Daniel said, the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I've come in response to them. Come on. Amen. Amen. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. But I was detained. They were the king of Persia. Now I come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future. For the vision concerns a time yet to come. This is one of the most crazy passages in the Bible. This is Daniel, the prophet, talking to an angel. If you read the whole passage, chapter 10, that angel comes to, to Daniel and is talking to him. He's stunned. He's got the two angels, and, and he's like burning brown, and he's glowing, and he's like, I, I'm afraid. And then another one taps him on the shoulders, starts talking to him. He's like, oh, God, help me. Right? He says, don't be afraid. He says, look, from the time that you decided to do right, your prayer was answered. Amen. Now, you're just seeing the fruit of it now. Did you get that? If you decide to do right now, if you decide to pray prayers of repentance now, if you decide to pray prayers of faith and deliverance, transformation now. Do you understand that if it's in faith, your prayer will be answered the moment the prayer is made? Do you know that Abraham's prayer to have that child was answered the moment he made it? And the victory! And we understand faith, the revelation of the victory happens now. You claim the victory now, and God delivers the package when the package delivers. You understand that?
spiritual battles that took place, that had to happen to fall in place before the package got delivered. Come on. Right. He gave, he, this is God giving a little insight into what happens with the unseen form all around us. This right, this, there's some things that are working out on the spiritual realm, but your package is on the way. We don't ever lose. <clears throat> it's on the way. Hey, Michael wasn't worried. We just had to take a route through Persia and take care of some stuff over there. And now we're here. But we were always coming from the moment we prayed that prayer. Amen. We need to stop making requests and start claiming victory. Amen. We need to stop making requests and start claiming the victory in advance. And to God we go. 